Hey guys, uh, we're going to try this again. We're going to build ourselves a second arrow uh, sheet metal garden shed. Uh, you saw what happened to our last one. That one's gone. Um, <clears throat> we kind of already did this part of the video um, in, the, in the first one, but that's you know a moot point, I guess, at this point. But uh, We didn't show you uh, this time the uh, assembly of the framing members. All the framing members in the kit come in two pieces and all you do is just bolt them together. And that's pretty simple and that's in the instructions. If you if you like hardware, you'll love the Arrow, uh, the Arrow Garden Shed Kit. You get to put a lot of it in there. But, <clears throat> so yeah, you, you bolt all the, all the uh, framing members together. Um, those just get set aside for now. And then you build this, uh, the base. It's just a big rectangular base on the ground. Um, when you're doing your assembly, uh, one thing that I, I kind of learned is uh, make yourself a little nut driver like this. I, I didn't have a, a 7 30 seconds nut driver, so I just made it out of a, like a quarter inch extension and a 7 30 seconds, like a deeper well socket on the end of it. It's for holding the, the nut on the, the little tiny nut at the back of the hardware when you're tightening the bolts up. If, instead of using the pliers or something like that, it slips off all the time. This kind of speeds up your assembly process. And then get yourself a small screwdriver also um, for aligning the holes. Um, in the two you know, separate pieces of sheet metal, lose it kind of like an awl, and just pull pull the holes together so you can drop the bolts in easier. That'll speed up your assembly a little bit too. Um, in the instructions, it tells you to square the base right away. We did that in the first in the first uh, with the first shed. I got it here, you know, to, to level it out as best as I could uh, with the ground being what it is, and then uh, made sure it was it was perfectly square. Measured it corner to corner and all that stuff. Uh, the reality is, uh, this shed could be totally built. And if it was at a square, I could push on one side and I could square it up then. So it doesn't really make any difference. Square it up whenever you want, I think. That's my opinion anyway.
All right, this is where uh, where we're at now. Um, you assemble the corners first. The corners just get uh, like there's small sheet metal screws. This gets screwed into the bottom rail, um, and you'll attach you know the whole corner at one one time. These are two separate panels. Um, attach them to the bottom, then they'll get bolted together. At that point, they're very very flimsy. I mean, the slightest breeze could uh, tip them over, and you'd bend your sheets all up and things like that. So we went ahead and hurried up and did that as quick as we can because the wind's kind of coming up here a little bit. And then establish all of our top rails too to kind of tie them all together, give them some kind of rigidity. Um, without these, these things just kind of flop all over. So this is where they're at now. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. You have two side angles. They have kind of a more of a 45 on them. That's, I think that's just for uh, shedding moisture, which is kind of weird because it sheds the moisture on the inside of the, this tin piece. But the roof should cover the whole thing anyway, so whatever, I guess. Um, and the front and back parts are flat. This is a rail for the door uh, to slide in. Uh, that makes up the whole entire front assembly for the top. And the back is basically a piece of piece of just like 90 degree bent, like an angle iron or whatever, pretty much that you bolt together. It comes in two pieces like everything else. Um, but that's where we're at right now. Um, we're going to sheet up the sides and uh, I think the wall braces go in after that. All right, you guys, um, you can see we kind of fast-forwarded on you a little bit. I know uh, we kind of were in a hurry to get it done since it just didn't, the wind was picking up and everything like that, so we wanted to get some stuff done besides stopping to make a video. But we'll go through what we did here. Uh, before, we just had our, our corner panels on and the uh, and the uh, support beams across the top, pretty much. Um, uh, after that, you add your center panels. There's three of them that go on the sides and two of them that go in the back. Uh, and they get uh, bolted to each other. And then they'll get bolted to a, a brace that's on the inside in the center of the building. We can show you that real quick. Each one of these, uh, each one of these panels will get uh, screwed to the C channel here. Um, and the C-channel goes all the way around both sides and the back. Um, and the C-channels get bolted together in the back. Um, in the front, they have a smaller support uh, that they get screwed to. And they, these panels also get bolted together. That's how the whole shed's constructed. That every panel's going to bolt into the next panel. Um, and screwed to these supports, top, middle, and bottom. Um, and then, you put your gable ends up. Uh, well, make sure also that you... Your, your door slides get put in the door channel before you put this in because otherwise you won't you won't be able to get it in they butt all the way to the walls so these have to be in here ahead of time that'll save you some time later on taking it all apart <coughs> or whatever um and your gable ends go on they just basically screw down uh on the front and back with your sheet metal screws 
um, they'll get uh, a, a pair of brackets it's supposed to help support the do support the um, the door slide, and also um, there'll be a, a triangular bracket that'll go up and bolt into this uh, main rafter. When you're building your rafters, you build two single single rafters that go on the outside, and one gets doubled up for the um, the peak of the gable or whatever. So uh, that'll hang from the middle uh, from this, this little uh, this broke section of the sheet metal and it'll hang from that and there's a, a galvanized bracket they give you for both of the side uh, rafters and those just hang from that that'll that kind of trues the gable ends up a little bit because before that they just flop around kind of like our corner pieces did because there's no support to them but once you get your rafters up a little more support the whole shed's a little, little bit more steady anyway that's where we're at now now we um we put uh roof panels on um there's a uh like a ridge pole goes across the top of the whole thing to cover your screw heads up so that it'll shed water and all that kind of good stuff. But we'll show you that when we, when we get to that point. All right, uh, well, uh, we put our roof uh, roof metal on now. Um, roof metal is a little bit, little bit more challenging to get around a ladder and things like that. Um, you have like a, a starter piece um, that'll bolt to, the side of the, bolt to the side of the building. It has a slight overhang um, on it and uh, uh, the then it'll just kind of screw down to those uh, existing floor or the ceiling joists, um, like the rest of them. After you uh, start start with your starter, the rest of them all just kind of lay in with each other. You bolt them together, just like to the side here, whatever. Then down to the to the structural beams, whatever you want to call them, like just like they did in the wall sections. And that'll kind of stiffen up your your gable sections that they had. They just kind of flop until you, know, you put your rafters up, and this actually uh, sturdies them up, up quite a bit. So they're in a little better shape now. Or whatever we did uh, start putting the flooring kit in too um, we're going to lay a plywood floor on top of that um, i can show you what that looks like too that lays out kind of like this uh i was i would think i'm not 100 percent sure but i would think um with a 10 by 12 building you'd want to lay a, a 4 by 8 sheet um you know say like this way, and then two uh, four by eight sheets this direction. That'd be four feet plus eight feet would be twelve feet. That'd be no cutting, nothing like that. You'll have a two foot section along the side um, that you will have to cut and lay in. But we'll see how the how the flooring kit, you know, how it measures out and where we're gonna have to put our seams at because you want a seam on top of one of these uh, little structural pieces or whatever. So we'll kind of lay them in here and see how we want to do that. But uh, you can see the inside of. What the shed looks like, which is probably a pretty good uh, guide on how how the thing needs to be built. You know, when you just look at the box, um, it's hard to say, you know, what the thing's going to look like when, it, when it's all built and stuff like that. But it'll look like this on the inside. Um, so when you're laying your pieces out, you kind of know what they're for now. You know, instead of just being blind to it until you get to that step. So, uh, but yeah, the floor will set on on top of this. Uh, these little floating. Uh, sections and then on the, on the lip of this as well. So you can tie all this together with that wood to give some more structure to the to the building. And like I said, once you um once you put about eight nine hundred pounds of stuff in here, then maybe the thing won't go anywhere anymore, and that'll be nice. So <clears throat> yeah, that's where we're at. And maybe we have to build the doors yet too, and we'll show you that too. All right, uh, well, we're pretty much done now with it. Um, we built the doors. We uh, laid our flooring down on top of that uh, that flooring joist stuff that you guys saw earlier. Um, I'm not a carpenter. This is what I came up with. Um, it's kind of difficult to um, to orient your boards in here because um, the way they, they strung those uh, those little support beams didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. I mean, your your board should end halfway on one, so your next board can lap over that one and share the support and things. There's a lot of places where you just, there's no way to do it with a four by eight sheet of plywood. And uh, we used, actually we used half inch plywood. I wasn't quite sure. We just said, eh, half, half inch sounds good. Um, if you guys put a wood floor in kind of like this on that, on that floating floor kit, I'd use probably at least three quarter. This stuff is a little bit flimsy. And that was my bad. That was something, you know, I, I, I just chose and that it probably isn't the right thing as far as like carrying a load and so in, in between those joists. The joist things seemed like they were pretty close together to me, so I thought maybe a little half inch should be fine, but I'd at least go three quarter. But yeah, for now, we just have the floor kit in. We're just going to put some weight in there. Um, put some, some uh, bags of concrete. 
I think what we might end up doing, it seems pretty hillbilly, we might just, uh, we have some land anchors that go down probably a little over a foot in the ground, and then just like ratchet strap over the top of this thing. This is, we're paranoid, like I don't want this thing to blow away again. Um, it doesn't seem like the construction of the thing is very, uh, is very robust. It's, it's a pretty flimsy unit, and where we live, I'm not 100% sure about, my wife said that um, she's not quite sure if it lasts through the winter. I'm not sure I'd argue with that. I don't know that it will. If you got a, a couple of really good, uh, like, windstorms, something like that, this thing might shake itself to pieces. And the doors are, the door handles are on upside down. I need to fix that yet. But anyway, um, the doors are just really, really lightweight, you know, and things like that. Um, so I don't really know about it. I guess we'll, we'll try it out. We have to make some uh, adjustments or, you know, beef some things up later on. I guess try to make it last as long as we can. We might end up having to redo the floor in here too. Because I'm not a carpenter. That's what I came up with. I don't think it turned out terrible, but as far as like load bearing, I think you'd probably use some heavier plywood if I were you. Um, but I don't know. That's kind of my opinion about the whole thing. It's cheap. It, I mean, I should say it's inexpensive. It's inexpensive, and there's probably a reason for that. <laughs> is what I come up with. Um, you know, for us, I guess. Uh, by the time we bought two of these, we could have actually just built like a wooden shed. That's something that would be here for a long time. Um, I don't know that these things are meant to be used for a really long time. Maybe four or five years, something like that, and things get broken and they're just meant to be trashed and thrown away and built another one or something like that. That's, that's just my opinion on that. Anyway, uh, have a great night, you guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this video.